Republicans on Capitol Hill explore the idea of impeachment hearings targeting President Biden. Illinois overpaid unemployment benefits to the tune of billions of dollars. And Iowa's Attorney General plans to go after some of the biggest companies in the United States for their diversity policies. We'll talk about that this morning with former Scott County Democratic Party Chair Alicia Gaiman and former Rock Island County Republican Party Chair Bill Bloom. Always nice to see you both. Well, we will start in Iowa. Attorney General Brenda Byrd recently announced the next steps in the Republican fight to stop diversity, equity, and inclusion practices. The state earlier this year adopted a law to get rid of DEI programs at the public universities in the state. State. Well, now Byrd joined 12 other attorneys general to target Fortune 100 companies for their hiring activity. They threatened to sue the companies they claim are being discriminatory in their hiring by putting a priority on diversity. There are a lot of studies out there that find diverse workplaces tend to be, poor, tend to be more productive and it stands to argue that productive companies make more money and are better for the economy. So are these states in line or going too far? How much autonomy should companies have when picking who they want to work for them? Bill? Well, I think I, you know, I don't think they have any problem with the diverse company, with diverse workplaces. I think what they're basically saying is that companies need to follow the Constitution. Um, if you look at the the language in the Voting Rights Act, if you look at the uh, recent ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court and uh, and the, and the wording in the Constitution, basically you have to treat all your employees the same. Um, and and really, people should be hired based on on their ability to do the job, their desire to do the work. Um, Martin Luther King would say that we, they should be evaluated and hired based on their character rather than, you know, which uh, uh, sociological niche they fall into. Alicia, do you see that that's the way this case is being treated by attorneys general involved in this case? Oh, absolutely not. I think it's a huge infringement on companies' right to operate, um, you know, as businesses and make decisions that are going to, you know, bolster their bottom line and their missions of their companies. Um, I think it, you know, definitely is another attack on, you know, marginalized individuals within, you know, organizations um, to not have these practices in place and to target and, uh, you know, threaten funding and legal action towards companies that are, you know, going above and beyond and setting um, good examples as to how to steward and how to create equitable um, workplaces. And, um, you know, I think this is going to uh, not only affect um, companies wanting to open up shop here in Iowa, it's going to affect companies that are headquartered here, that are headquartered nearby. John Deere has a huge um, focus on inclusion and obviously agriculture and the farm economy is huge in Iowa. Um, so it's going to have a, a great impact on employers here and I think what we're going to see is this heavily litigated um, through the federal court system because it definitely flies in the face of, uh, you know, a lot of discrimination policies that are that are in place at the moment. Moving on, Democrats in Illinois made it a point to tout the state's improved financial position recently. State revenues hit a record high. The state has a $700 million surplus, though that tempered a bit this week when Illinois' Auditor General found the state overpaid unemployment benefits by more than $5 billion. That happened during the pandemic between 2020 and 2022. The Auditor's report found a lot of fraud and identity theft played into that. The Department of Employment Security maintains the crisis of the pandemic presented new challenges, including the implementation of a new unemployment insurance program in a very short time. Republicans call it a government failure. Illinois, though, is not alone in making overpayments, red and blue states. For example, unemployment overpayments in Iowa are in the hundreds of millions of dollars for the same period. How much does this just show weakness in Illinois and state bureaucracies overall, Alicia? Um, I think one of the biggest things that this, you know, goes to, to talk to, and this has been a big issue in Iowa over the auditor's authority and power um, in controversy, um, controversial legislation passed this last year, is how important it is to have these watchdogs for the fact of, you know, protecting the taxpayers. Um, I feel for government agencies because in COVID, everybody was kind of not knowing exactly what was doing where federal funds. It was all very murky um, in order to try to roll out funds as quickly as possible to people and I think um, you know there probably wasn't as much oversight that needed to happen that, that the capacity was there for at that time um, with that influx of funding but I think it speaks to the fact that um, it's a good thing that they have an auditor have you know are looking into this and, and can start to rectify uh, these issues
issues for the taxpayers as they come up. And I think it's important to also um, note, you know, that that is why the office of the auditor um, is so important in, in every state. And it looks a little bit different from Iowa to Illinois, but um, we need those independent um, branches of government looking at other branches to make sure everything is done in, in a way that's fair for the taxpayer. Bill, this glut of money just present opportunities for abuse? I think, uh, you know, when Alicia said we need more oversight, I think she's exactly right. I think if you uh, look at the record of Illinois, they paid, they sent payments to 481 debt people and almost 3,500 inmates of their uh, correctional institutes. Um, you know, the, the, I think, I think uh, that that project in Illinois was a study on how not to manage something. They should start off by firing the person who was in charge of it. Um, they should look at how they, uh, you know, how they picked out the companies that were designed that were there to write up the process, the workflows, and the software. Uh, they should they should have looked at what other states were doing. Um, I, th I think, uh, you know, thirty five five and a quarter billion dollars in overpayments, uh, million, hundreds of millions of uh, of uh, efforts at fraud. I think that all speaks to the uh, vulnerability of the way Illinois does things. Well, Texas, for example, had billions of dollars in problems as well. A bill blew militia game and stand by. Still ahead, broaching impeachment. The Speaker of the House says Republicans could launch an inquiry into Joe Biden. What hazards there could be from this latest political threat? For the record.